I'll tell them folks about the time you see me on the sideline at Georgia Tech. And you got kicked off? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't know why why they kicked you off the field, though. You had the pass and everything, but, like, they oh. like, nah, dog. Nah. You, you can't be right Clemson here. Staff, <laughs> it was some of your Clemson staff who hated it. They like, okay. So, story is... What is going on? I am Quincy Avery, joined by my host, Deshaun Watson, for another episode of QB Unplugged, where we talk to superstar NFL quarterback Deshaun Watson, along with many other quarterbacks from college, high school, and NFL, brought to you by the Lockerverse. Please tap into the Dog Power community for exclusive insights. Hit the link, subscribe, do all the good stuff. So you can be tapped into all things we are doing. QB Unplug D4, what it do? What's good, man? Man, cool it. Trying to uh enjoy the off season. You enjoying it? I heard I heard them talking about you about to be back. <laughs> Throwing hey, yeah, how you no, feeling? We we close. No, we super close. So I you know, I, I went on a little uh little trip to Rome for a weekend. The soccer game, but outside of that, like I just been grinding, bro, six days a week, Monday through Saturday. So ain't really too much time to really enjoy it, you know what I'm saying? But everything so you, been going you, smooth. You gonna be back by like OTAs? What the schedule looking like? Are you just taking it day by day, making That's, sure the show? Yeah, is... I think it's really just day by day for real. Um, you know, we don't want to set like a, a, a real date. But, you know, we got kind of an estimate of where we're going to start throwing the, the you know, process. I feel like that's the everything. That's the last thing that I need, uh, need to get back. You know, I started back training, started back running. I can do everything else. So, you know, just to throw in motion a day like that, you just got to get back on track with that. Yeah, them folks, I've seen them posting Instagram stories, you know what I'm saying? You at UCLA, letting yeah. them know where it comes first. Yeah, vote. Yeah, always, man. The work going to come first before we go out and play, man. This show, you see, uh, you see the Jason Kelsey news. I did, I did. Congratulations to him, man. Uh, hell of a career, uh, hell of a legacy. Uh, I think he went out the way he wanted to probably go out. I'm, um, of course, you know, he probably wanted to go out on top, but um, you know, I think you can tell over the last couple of years he's been enjoying his his uh, last little last leg with Philly for sure. You know what I'm saying? Being able to go see his brother play and the podcast and everything, so it's dope. That boy been living it up, looking like a real superstar out here. <laughs> you think no, fat. You think that's gonna like mess up the the tush push, the QB sneak? Is it gonna be like a big impact not having him? Yeah, that's tough. I mean that's a that's a big shooter feel. I'm pretty sure they're gonna find a way to feel it, but like he was the head center, head hunch over that thing, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean Jalen's Jalen is super strong, you know what I'm saying? All of those things. But I think Kelsey is really the the straw that stirred that that plays drink. You know what I'm saying? He Nah facts. He's like really like moving shit out the way. Like he getting it. Nah, facts. He getting everybody going. So <laughs> I think that they may be for a rude awakening. They think they're about to be just running so? quarterback sneak. It oh ain't gonna God. be hundred percent no more. It, it ain't gonna be like, oh, okay, we doing this is <laughs> over with. I don't know what yeah. rugby team they had coming in there before, but they're going to need to do something really spectacular and amazing to keep, you know what I'm saying, keep that up. You know what i And then we we scrolling Twitter. I'm scrolling Twitter. I see Miko Harbin name. You know what I'm saying, Miko. And yeah, Lena. Super Bowl I champ. feel like you're from Atlanta just because we've seen him. <laughs> yeah, yeah boy if you ain't really from Atlanta, here. but you're from. You from close to the area, you pretty much say you from Atlanta. <laughs> he like Atlanta adjacent, you know what I'm saying? We go yeah, just like so. you say you from Atlanta, same thing, you know what I'm saying? We go adjacent. Basically say yeah. you from Atlanta. Yeah, we Atlanta adjacent. But them boys talking about he was out here sharing game plans. For real? So I didn't see I I, I didn't see that on Twitter. Well, well, tell me the scoop, man. What's going on? So I, I don't believe it to be true. And I feel like I feel like the the sensitivity to say that, I think that really is probably too far unless somebody really did something. If I was right. Nico, I think he's done a good job, you know, defending his name, talking about all the things that probably aren't what it seems like. But for them to say that, it's like so the person saying it? he's passing up. It seemed like it seemed like 
any sauce, right? Based on what I'm here. It seems like sauce is the one who said it. It seems like sauce is the one who said it. Oh, Made man. people think, you know what I'm saying? So, but it's hard, right? Him and Breeze Hall, from what I heard, are out here telling folks that uh, he's giving away games. Oh, both of that, them. That's like, I think they said it in jest. And it turned into a war. <laughs> nah, I'm about to go. Like, can you this, imagine this is, this is some of you on the Houston, Texas, just saying a joke about you? Like, man, why was I out here doing this? Nah, like, that can lead over. Yeah, that can lead to yeah, all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Violations, crime, hey, investigation. <laughs> <Clear> my name <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's crazy. I'm about to go look that up for sure. Yeah, you you got to make sure you get tapped in on that because that was that had me. In a full laugh, full chuckle for a whole day. And then the news about Johnny Manziel. With the Heisman? Yeah. So Johnny Manziel, guess- he just says he's not going to Heisman ceremony no more until Reggie Bush gets his award back. How you feel about it? Nah. I mean, if I had a Heisman, I'd probably do. I'd probably say the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that I think Reggie should have his Heisman. I don't think they should. You know what I'm saying? I get, I get what they were trying to do, but at the same time, though, like, bro, he earned that thing. You know what I'm saying? He earned the Heisman. He earned that trophy. Like, and then nowadays, like people are getting paid and doing all this stuff, it just don't make sense just to keep it. Don't don't just say really? nowadays. Don't act like when you was playing, before Reggie Bush is playing, this whole time, you don't know folks who's <laughs> getting broke off. Like, we all no, no, know for people sure. I, well, who I know that. large they know amounts that of too. money. Yeah. For sure. And they know that, too. I'm just saying with the scope of everything now, it's like, all right, Reggie, like, you he, he your trophy back. You know what I'm saying? Or something. You feel me? Like, you're not really proving that. And, like, I don't know. I think I that it's a weird you, hill so. to die on. Like, this is somebody who was so impactful to college football. <laughs> I feel like mm-hmm. that was the reason a lot of people did a lot of the cool, like the DeAnthony Thomases, the black, you know what I'm saying? Like all these people who try to emulate that playing style did that because of him. He was one of the most influential people for the game. He did more than anybody else in terms of when he was doing it. He deserved that money for one. And for two, <laughs> everybody else out here getting paid. I, I think that for one, that's what support looks like. When you see somebody who's being wrong, whether they they your friend or not your friend, to be able to stand behind them, like, nah, I think this is messed up. Let me do something to change it. And I yeah. think that the tweet Johnny sent out was was strong, so I salute him on that. But I think there needs to be yeah, more major. guys who want a Heisman to come up and and, and kind of be on the same type of time as him. I agree with that. No, nah, salute the journey for sure. You know what I'm saying? That's a big step. That's a big. Uh, step to take, you know what I'm saying? Especially say, but I think it's the right time for him. You know, he's coming out doing his podcast, and you know he's he's doing, uh, you know, he's showing his face a little bit more. And I think that's real good for Johnny to be able to say stuff like that. You know, it's a lot on his mind that he want to get off. So, salute to him. And speaking of Johnny, speaking of influence, and speaking of impact, and then ESPN gave us a list. You happen to be on the list. You were number six. Let me. Yeah. These are the the top quarterbacks of the two thousands. I'm gonna give I've it to you in order. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you in order, and then and then I need to know <clears throat> what you're changing on this list. Who you move up? Who you move down? Who you move out? And who needs to get All on? Right, All right. Board. So we gonna start at we gonna start at number one, Baker Mayfield. All right. Number two, Cam Newton. Three, okay. Vince Young. Four, okay. Tim Tebow. Five, Joe Burrow. Six, Deshaun Watson. Seven, Kyler Murray. Eight, Lamar Jackson. Nine, Marcus Mariota. Ten, Robert Griffin. Yeah, I'm moving some guys around. Uh, let let me, list, oh, sure. I know you're moving. So who's your, who is your new number one? New number one? That's hard. Do I have to put them in order? I let somebody else do my work. I mean, okay, you don't have to I put think, them all in order. I give you, but you 10, have to give I me give at least number. You, no, but I no no. I need your number one. You all can't right. just give me ten. We we need your number one, and then you can give me ten guys. Number one. 
And and the, and this list, I'm assuming, just like impact of like team college football, or is it just like just ball player? Who was the best quarterback? Like it's everything. I, I, they didn't give us no criteria. You make up your own criteria. What is best to you? Because my I'm gonna give you my top three, my three best quarterbacks. I mean, obviously, I'm biased. I'm gonna say myself. You feel me? But like, you going you I'm number one. Myself. You number, number one. One. I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I can go anywhere between one and three. Man, all right, give me your top three. <laughs> You keep trying to skirt uh, the question. I'm gonna give you this. I mean, nah, give me the the. I need the the one. My one's easy. Who? Cam Newton. Cam Newton what? took a bunch of. Yeah. It, it, so he did only do it for one see, year. I, I so was see, 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 I was gonna say. So it hurts to me only did for one say, year. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna give you my one through three. Number one, Cam right. Newton. And I'm going to give it to Cam because I think he had the best season ever, ever as a quarterback in college. Number right. two, yeah. Vince Young. Number three, you. Number four, my number four is a lot different. I'm going to go Joe Burrow. It's my number four. My number five okay. is Lamar. My number six. Oh, Sorry. My my, hello, my numbers hello, is fucked bro. up. My yeah, numbers is fucked up. So skip like somebody. Hello, whoa, whoa, whoa. Tim my, Tebow. my my number my number four is Johnny. Johnny is number four because he didn't win a national championship. He didn't win a national Over championship. Tim Tebow? Yes. Johnny is number four. College football. Johnny is number four. Tim Tebow okay. had one of the best teams You're right. ever around. He did. He did. He best did. receivers, he did. best linemen. Best defense, best secondary. Joe right. hated. Cam Newton was his backup. They could have played with anybody. So I got Johnny Manziel as my number four, Joe Burrow five, Kyler six. No, yeah, Kyler six. Sorry, Lamar six, Kyler seven, Marcus eight. My list ends at eight. Really. No, RG3? Yeah. No. No. Really? RG3 was, he was good. He was Benny a good wasn't player, good, though. He weren't good. He was, he was a good player. He did a lot of cool shit. But he's not. No, I, thought, I okay. can't put him on any list right. that involves tops. All right, so I'm going. Andrew Luck would go over him and Trevor Lawrence. So those are my last two. Andrew Luck, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to say, I can agree, Cam Newton. One, Vince Young, two. Those are two guys that I looked up to, so I'm fine with saying them one or two. Uh, mm-hmm. Or you can go either one. Um, me, three for sure. Four. Look, I I, I guess I go Johnny Menzel. It's a hard, it's a hard decision to choose between Johnny Menzel and Lamar Jackson. Very. I played but, against Lamar twice. That game was crazy. You know what I'm saying? That game like, was crazy. Bro, was, he was different. Like, when he touched he the ball, the one. it was a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wrap, but Johnny was the same way. Um, so, I would say Cam, Vince, either one, me three, Johnny or Lamar, four or five, um, six, Joe Burrow. Okay. Seven. I'm going Marcus Mariota. And Special then Colin on the Murray. championship. Okay. And then Colin Murray. I agree with that. That's that's a good call. Yeah. yeah. And then I I'm think... cool with Trevor and Andrew Love too. You know what I'm saying? So you're getting Baker out. You're getting Baker out. I, yeah. I, Baker being number Baker one out. is so mind blowing to me. I don't, I don't, not that he wasn't a good college either. quarterback, he was a very good college quarterback. He won really a Heisman. Good. He didn't win a national championship. Close. Did he ever get to a national championship game? Was the Georgia game a national championship? Nah, because I, I think, think Georgia so. played Bama the next week, right? Yeah. Because the Rose Bowl. Yeah. I mean, he had they play a in lot the Rose Bowl. Because like, I beat him in the Orange cool Bowl. Shit. I think he lost in the Rose Bowl. 
to Georgia. You just had to throw it in there? You beat him in the Rose Bowl? I mean, the Orange Bowl, you just had to make sure people knew? I mean, <laughs> they, you know. I don't, the only reason right. I would say, shit, really, I should be one? Because I nobody ever did what I did. I was the first person to do it. First person to do what? 4,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards in one season. No one Pop in your the shit. history of, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm <laughs> saying I can be one too. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't say, yeah, you had yeah, your team that's all was a little bit better than Cam's. Your team was definitely more talented than Cam's. Yeah, you had pros. Yeah, the reason I did. got Cam so high is because Cam was out there by himself. Nah, Cam that, was different, that, though. That, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cam was a dog, yo. <laughs> he was a dog for sure. Like, bro, it was like that. Still is. Every time I, I go back and watch it, like, oh, Cam, I got to tip my hat to him. Hey. Yo, you know what we forgot? Oh. Jameis Winston. Oh, my God. Oh my! James. I feel like we got to rewrite the whole list. He's not even on the list. <laughs> there was some disrespectful I, I'm, I'm stuff taking, going under the I'm list. Taking, I'm taking Tyler Murray out and put Jimmy Swift. I got to leave Tyler Marcus Murray off the list. Why he would be? James James had a better was, college career than Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck was good in college, I, great prospect, but he wasn't a special like that. Sorry, yeah. I'm not saying that he was. He was a supreme you know, talent. I think. Well, I, I didn't really get the watch because I was I was high school still kind of coming yeah. out, and we and a lot of you know we don't watch in Stanford, so I didn't really watch Stanford <laughs> until Christian McCaffrey got there. Yeah, like I'm not watching Man. it until they got McCaffrey, and then McCaffrey, really, you know, I was, became a big fan of McCaffrey, and that's how I started watching Stanford. And then David, I think David Shaw was the coach. He used to come to our spring practices, and uh, at Clemson. With Dabo. So, like, that's how that connection kind of happened. And I was like, I became a fan of Stafford. But, shit, yeah. So, you, I, you can't leave Jamie. Yeah, so you can't you, leave Jamie. So, you really want to say you're, you're number one. Like, you don't have to be humble. We could just say Deshaun wants to put himself at number one. He got, he got Cam and Vince. One. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if I had a college career like yours, I would I would start the list with me. <laughs> and I would end the list yeah. with me. And I, would I, don't, like how they, I don't like how they – uh, my 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 record though, even though it's just one loss, it say I'm thirty two and three. I'm really thirty two and two. But I guess Where if you it? start a game and you don't finish it, when somebody else finish it for you, what game the was starters that? Starters still get the win. It was my freshman year at Georgia Tech. I tore my ACL, and we were up. I think we were mm. up fourteen three or something like that. We we're about to smash them, and then literally let's the play. They called a pick six, and then that's the you know we lost like twenty seven to thirteen or so. That's when they was running that option, that triple option. That yee yee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit was bad, dog. You hate playing against them boys. But Georgia Tech, I'm tell them folks some other time you see me on the sideline at Georgia Tech. And you got kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't know why why they kicked you off the field though. You had the pass and everything, but like they oh. like nah, dog. Nah. You, you can't be right Clemson here. Staff, <laughs> even some of the Clemson staff who hated, they like okay. So story is Georgia Tech playing Clemson night game. It's a Thursday night game, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it's Prime Thursday time, night yep. game. It's Clemson Thursday versus night. Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech in Atlanta. So this was early on in my in my training days, and I knew how critical it was to get on the field. So if you if you on the field, people gonna look at you different. Social media, take a picture, whatever, flick it up. So I'm like, yeah, Should I I gotta get on this field, and I don't know how I'm gonna do it. It's so hard. yeah, yeah, it's, it's so weird. And later, like I can't, I'll be on the field, my dog playing. <laughs> so I get to the stadium like four hours before the game, and I just see what the credential look like. I see somebody else put it on, I'm like. Bet. Go home. No, I go to FedEx right down the street. I took a picture and I'm just making this joint on Photoshop. Like I made That's how a you fake did credential. It. Yeah, I made a fake Duh. credential on Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> so I make a fake credential on Photoshop. It's a little off, but it is, it looks pretty legit. So I walk through the stadium, walk on the sideline, daft you whatever. About second quarter, 
somebody's like just pointing at me on the clenching side. Like I guess I'd like got in y'all box, like where y'all standing at. You was you was yeah. very very close to the box. <laughs> no, I was damn near touching damn old head. Like like I should be calling plays. So, like, <laughs> just standing like I'm supposed to be here. Then next thing I know, a police officer comes to me and like, hey, uh, who you here with? I'm like, I'm I'm with Clemson. They go ask Spiller, because like Spiller was like on your staff or something. He's like, oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, like three more C- coaches. CJ Spiller, right? The running back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, come on, like bro. You just gotta coaches. look at Brown and be like, "Hey, come on now." Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. Like, he cool. <laughs> yeah, they was like, "Come with me." So they didn't put me in handcuffs while I'm in the stadium. They just walked me out, mad aggressive, like grab my arm. I like walk right down the sideline in front of the coaches and front of the whole team, in front of the. <laughs> <laughs> I you just see you walking up the like, side, yo. That's crazy. This is cr- this is tripping. So we I like, get yeah, to, uh, tripping. I just see you walking <laughs> out. <laughs> we get to the door. We get to the door. They're like, "Hey, we we could give you the citation, but we're just gonna tell you don't come back." I'm like, "That's a bet." I already got my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I got what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I can watch the second. Got what anyway. I need. Yeah. Boy, I was the king of making a fake credential back in them times. Like, if I needed it, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying you got to get it done. However, it needed to happen, it was about to get done. But uh, we was on the quarterback list. We talked about number one. I'm a, did you did you see the the Cam Newton tussle? I did. You got the information. <laughs> what though. Was... I know you got the info because you always got the info and stuff going on in the A. So like, I don't know. I just see what I saw <laughs> on Twitter, and I'm just like, yo, this is crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I was I I know what those counts be like. I know how aggressive it'd be. Like I was the first, I was Cam's first quarterback of his of his team, of the the C and one, like the whole All Stars. So, you know, I know exactly what's going on. I know everybody he mentioned, like all that stuff. So it's like it's family. But like I've never seen them get to the point where it got that aggressive. You know what I'm saying? So like ever. It is crazy because we know everybody involved. You know Cam. Exactly. You know TJ and Steph. Yeah. Like everybody so I just knew early on it was a little bit different than what people were thinking because everybody's so tight. It's like a situation right. where people have like almost grown up together, know each other. So I knew it was like, they just like, yo, let me just jump on can. So, you know, everybody, <laughs> everybody know each other, everybody family. So I knew it was a situation that got blown out of proportion. I knew it was a situation that went too far. But Cam, I think he took some real accountability. I'm going to say what his exact quote was. This is what I really want the narrative to be. To every single high school player, to every single person I've influenced, to every single athlete, use my situation as a way to understand that one moment and then one decision your life can change. Just like that. I let my emotions emotions get the best of me. Should not have called it should not have been called for. Simple. With that, I apologize to everybody expected. That step, TJ, their organization, C1N, my organization, my players, my parents, my staff. Like. I think that he did a good job taking accountability. I think that, you know, Steph and TJ did too. But seeing it, it was just crazy. Like, people were like, 20 people jumped Cam. This, Man, that, and the third. Nah, no, it yeah. wasn't that. It just was. So, but you know how Twitter folks, goes. They're going to run with it. It's going to be like, wow. They're going to add extras. <laughs> folks with such Every little zone. information have such strong opinions. That's why I hated to see, like, Stephen A. Smith talk about it. He didn't know what the fuck was going on. Cameron Mace. They didn't know. Like, so many people were talking, had no information. I think Cam yeah. cleared up a lot of what, you know, needed to be cleared up, took accountability because everybody was wrong. Both sides were wrong. Should have been fighting. But like I always said, once things get disrespectful, <laughs> <laughs> listen you know here. Go. At, at, after disrespect has happened, uh, uh, there is no, you can't control how somebody responds to disrespect. Or either. So I don't know who disrespected uh, who first. But you cannot control how folks respond to disrespect. Fact, and that's just how it is. But I think I think bro, he 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 definitely had to let he he definitely uh, did the right thing by responding like that for sure. Because he could have came all types so, of ways if he wanted to, you know what I'm saying? But you can tell like Cam is just ready for that to move on. Something like that always happened in the hood or in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like it just you know. His platform is bigger now, so of course it's gonna go everywhere. But if they was at the house, it would have been nothing. If it was just at one of the workouts that we usually be doing, it would have been nothing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, 
Those guys are going to see each other at one point or another. What happened was probably going to happen sooner or later. I just wish it wouldn't have been yeah. somewhere where there's cameras. Like like that Kentucky yes. fight in the locker room. Did you see that? No, nah, I didn't see that. Kentucky so fight. So University of Kentucky. Yeah, University of Kentucky football, f- football team. Yeah. Two linemen get to fighting, but suddenly recorded and post on Instagram. And I just think that oh, man. young folks Come don't on, know the bro. code. Like, I'm sure that there was fights when you were at Clemson in the locker room. But they Definitely never been all the time. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Locker room, like, at, it's the, a code. at the apartments, all that. <laughs> all Folks got to have it's a code like and understand, like, oh, no. Yeah, it can't be for that. You can't be trying to get no. your clout off on Instagram or folks like that. But we talked about enough of the riff rap, the things in the street, the fight, the tussles. How you feel about this draft? I think this draft is gonna be interesting. I think a lot of people, especially receivers, they made a lot of uh, a lot of stock for their name. Uh, you know, with the forty time and 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 just really just catching catching ability. So, uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of people made their uh, made their bread at the combine for sure. Kind of going back now, maybe I'm tripping, but there's so much information out now that makes me think that the combines are this. For one, you've got Man. the catapult on, right? So we know how fast right. you are. And there's no question, you're never once going to see somebody get in a three-point stance and take off running. That is silly. Right. right? That doesn't happen at <laughs> wide receiver. It doesn't happen at DB. Like, if you're fast, you're fast. We'll know that by, like, your acceleration, your top end speed. But getting in this three-point stance and running just isn't it. Right? If you're a receiver, you're probably going to jump to balance and make a release. Yeah. Right? If you're a DB, oh, is out of yeah. the back pedal. Is a linebacker, you're down to three-point stance. So that information that they're trying to determine is silly. You can tell how explosive some of these. You don't need to see a vertical jump. Like that's stupid. Like maybe yeah. get their measurements. Maybe interview them. All right. So you you had the experience of going through, you know, the combine, the medicals. Caleb Williams decided not to do the medicals. I think that that was a unique decision. I think it's a smart decision. Someone who has a real idea they're going first. But but what is that experience like? The medicals for the combine. Man, I I hated it. Cause it's like you walk into like these big rooms and all 32 teams got their medical team and you have to go to each group, you know, teams that want to evaluate you and they just check you out. You know what I'm saying? They, and they go through the history of your injuries and all that from the, the hands to the sprained ankles or, you know, I know you rolled your ankle in practice and they said you had to miss two days. You know what I'm saying? So they're going through all these files and these papers and just checking out your whole body. Just making sure, you know, it's, it's how they want it to be. Every single team gets to go through Pretty all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, grab, yeah. grab your shoulder. Ah, this this is an AC joint you sprained <laughs> back in ninth grade, huh? Nah, fast. Yeah, they go through everything. I mean, they know everything. You know, then that goes on with the meet and suit. You know, when we meet with the teams and things like that. Like they going all the way back. They talking about high school. They talking about you know your teacher, your professors. Like they they really do their research. It's a real. It's a real process, you know what I'm saying? And you just gotta go through it for own days. What is the you got any wild stories in, in those meetings, right? In between the coaching meetings and fifteen minutes, you get to sit down. Anything happened that was crazy, like damn. Um, I can't believe they actually did nah, this. Nah, nothing crazy. My meeting was good. Like at, at the time, you know, coming off a national championship, you know, this nice you know, good college career, things like that. Everything was going smooth. I think everybody just wanted to, you know, see me throw the nets, whatever day it was, you know, on the field. But outside of that, we just, we didn't even talk ball. I think it was one team. I think it was the Saints with Sean Payne. We did a little brief football stuff. But outside of that, like most of the teams, they just want to talk and get to know me a little bit more. We don't medicals. We don't win the meeting role. On the field, you see all these guys. Now I understand, once again, number one guy, you the number one guy, you do your but all these other guys decide, like, they not going to throw. How do, you, how do you feel about that? Like, what what goes into that decision? Uh, I don't know. To be honest, I, I I would assume that, like, the agent or team that's probably going to draft high, was start, you know, who knows, um, communicated with the player and was just like, I don't think it's beneficial for them to throw. Like, you're not going to change anything, especially going out there with guys that's, you know, fresh off of, you know, waking up and ain't even really warmed up and they got to just run a slam or you got to time them up and throw a goal. Like, you never even thrown to these guys. I think what can be beneficial, though, 
is that the teams can see you adjust to different guys and different speeds and, okay, different types of footballs thrown. If it's a, a fastball, you know, on the slant, it's a two ball, you know, across the middle or something like that. Then, you know, your three ball, fade ball, and how much touch do you have? So I think, you know, that's the beneficial part of throwing up the combine. Yeah, I think it'll all be much easier if we really knew what teams were looking for. Like, if there was something that was consistent, like, oh, this is what they're looking mm-hmm. for, I think that I think that everybody it makes it harder would. for y'all. Yeah, because we don't know what you're looking for. Like, are you <laughs> looking for arm strength? Are you looking for someone who generates force on the football? All those things. Yeah. Um, so when you don't have that, is is very difficult for you to determine. But every guy that I've ever worked with has decided to throw for the combine. I think that you can show like changes or improvements in your mechanics. Your fundamentals. Mm-hmm. I think Jalen Hurts to me is the big, biggest example of that. Like he did such a good job improving his fundamentals. It was like we got it, right? We got to go show people all the work that right. you've done. Uh, but if there's some of guys that done like major changes, uh, you know, I think it's always a, a good opportunity to go do the thing that you love. You're a quarterback. You want to go throw the football, right? So yeah, yeah. I think that if I was you know confident enough, and I felt like people just want to see how the football came out of my head. Then I would go. Uh, I go compete because I think that it, it's a fun opportunity. Another thing is it's people don't realize. Hard, though. Yeah, it's 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 one of the like, monumental mine. moments. I'm, yeah, I remember mine, and you know we're throwing, and it's, I can't remember if Pat was in my group, but I think it's me, Pat, and Mitch. You know, we don't know where we're going. Like it's not like how this class where you know who's the one, two, and three. You know what I'm saying? Our class mm-hmm. is like. Any one of us can go to the Cleveland Browns. Any one of us can go to Chicago. Any one of us can go to Jacksonville or, you know, such and such. So it's like we don't know where we're going to go, but we're going out there competing. We we having fun. We laughing. All right, cool. Good. Somebody make a, 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 a accurate throw. Good shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like how far are things like that? Then you build that connection, that friendship, and then, you know, a year later, two years later, three years later, we all at the Pro Bowl again. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. You build that bond, especially for your class, though. Like you gotta rip that class. And, and I don't think people talk enough about the relationships you build, right? Between those things and all the other things. But I, I remember even after Mahomes signed his deal, right? We were out in Arizona training. And he was like, "Oh yeah. shit, <laughs> a half a billion, right?" Yeah, the half next a thirty billion. minutes, the next thirty minutes, he texts you, talking about the deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I thought that was so cool. Nah, like, he gave me. It was super dope. You know, I reached out. Gave you the breakdown of is another the contract. Yeah, kind of why he did what like, he did. I'm like, like, I was like, all right, that mm-hmm. makes sense. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And that helped me going into my, my contract. So, yeah. All right. Everybody gets to do a little bit differently, but it's cool to see everybody get it done. So I'm interested. I know we're going to start digging into these these quarterbacks. I want to be able to pull up some some cut-ups, and we kind of dive into some good stuff. So we're going to have that coming up in the next couple weeks. But what I want to get into now is... Let me welcome each of you guys to the Q4 segment where we close out the show with top four lists from Deshaun Watson. Right? In today's list, give me the top four quarterbacks that you study, past and present, that you, you know, get a little inspiration, see a little gem, Maybe steal some for the game. Who, who are you watching? <laughs> I'm watching four, of course, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, and I'll probably say in my top four, those three I always watch. Right now, I've been lately, of course, Josh Allen. Just Josh Allen? Watching a lot of Josh for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been watching a lot of Josh because of, you know, Ken Dorsey, like these last this last month or so. Uh, with the offense and things like that. So Josh Allen and Cam, for sure. I've been watching a lot of film of them them guys. But, like, like naturally, just, just click up and, talk, you know, turn on a highlight or just watch a tape. I like to go back and watch Brady, uh, just the manager of the game, just, you know, taking things, taking the profit underneath, you know what I'm saying? Very short, mm-hmm. dink and dunk, but then exploiting uh, the deep ball. And then um, – Peyton Manning, just how he just operated. It's funny. I've been watching Peyton Manning since high school. You know, my high school coach, uh, Michael Perry, shout out to Michael Perry. 
was the one that really took my game to another level. We, we used to always watch Peyton Manning, just everything. We used to be the Peyton Manning high school football. That was our thing. And then A-Rod, just his just how dominant he is with the ball in his hand. You know what I'm saying? He's like, anytime you touch the ball, you never know how or where it's going to go, but it's going to go in the right spot majority of the time. And then, of course, you know, Cam and, you know, Josh from Ken Dorsey and his offense and how explosive they was. When I when I watch film, all right, number one guy that I'm watching, the guy that I like watching throw the football better than anybody, Dan Marino, because I mm-hmm. think that he threw the ball rotationally probably as well as you could. And my next guy is Aaron Rodgers. I'm a fan of him. I'm a fan of the way he throws the football. I think that it's really cool to see somebody change completely how they throw a football throughout their career. He came in throwing right. one way, throws a different way. Um, young guy that I really like watching, I really like watching Lamar just because of, he can do things that I just don't think other people can ever do. Right. Like, just in terms of like explosive run, like, damn, like that yeah. was. That was cool to watch. That's something I, I really like to see. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say any of the guys who I work with super close because, of course, I watch every single one of their games every yeah, every yeah. Saturday. <laughs> I'm sending notes about y'all games every week. The last guy uh, that I really like to watch is Kirk Cousins. And that probably sounds yeah. crazy because I, I've never came off like a, a big Kirk that, Cousins though. fan. But Kirk Cousins is somebody who plays on time and so well. And he's done a lot with, like, I think he has kind of flawed mechanics. Like, he's super accurate. He throws on time. He knows what he wants to do with the football. And I'm just learning, like, if you just have those characteristics, you don't have to be, have the strongest arm, be the best athlete, no, best not at all. pocket. But yeah. if you go to the line of scrimmage every time with the play, mm-hmm. know exactly what you want to do and who you want to manipulate, you can do really good things. Now, you might not be able to, the big play that we <laughs> need, he might not go make yeah. it, right? But he go go through the process. When you ask him to do things outside of the the box that we've uh, they ask him to do things in, I think that he struggles. But man, when you give him a plan, that dude is he's fun to watch because yeah, it's fun. I think he's the perfect office for what he wants to do. Hmm. In fact, yes, uh, I used to watch a lot. It's Drew Brees. Oof, I was a old Drew Brees is even crazier. Yo. I know. <laughs> old Drew, old Drew, but he couldn't finish his 20 yards. Uh, he's like, oh, let me just. He's just like, yeah, and he's just moving. He's just like, man, man, Drew Brees used to 5,000 every year. You know what I'm saying? That man was different. And I feel like he don't get the, more, the, the credit that he should, though. You know what I'm saying? I think, and I'm not saying that people don't give him credit. I think he's just one of those guys that kind of go under the radar. But when you think about him, like, oh, my gosh, like, he was really, really fucking good but like he just don't have that when you think of quarterbacks he's not the first one you think of you know what I'm saying which is I think he should be like I think he should be that way yeah that's my that's it for QB Unplugged Deshaun Watson me myself Quincy Avery make sure y'all tap it make sure you hit that like subscribe make sure you get the notifications because we want to see you back on QB Unplugged as we continue giving the ins and outs the quarterback position